Hello YouTube, welcome to another episode of Run Level Zero. Over the last couple of days I've been trying out uh, some new distros, see which one I want to review for you next, and it got me thinking back over a lot of the distros that I've used over the past couple of years and which distro I would consider the ultimate Linux distro for introducing somebody new to Linux, uh, specifically someone coming over from Windows. And I got to thinking about what I would look for in that operating system. It would have to be an operating system that was friendly to the user. The average Windows user is not somebody that knows a whole lot about their operating system. and They don't know a whole lot about how it, how it functions, what goes on underneath the hood. So you can't ask somebody just coming into Linux, especially not a casual user, uh, to be able to do a lot of manual configurations. Now over the past few years, I've had the pleasure of introducing a lot of my friends and family to Linux, and I've used a couple of different distros for that purpose. Of them all, I believe Zorn OS is probably my favorite distro for the new Linux user. It, I would consider it the ultimate uh, Linux distribution for somebody new. And the reason for that is based on Ubuntu and Ubuntu is known for being user friendly uh, j just by default but the distributors at Zorin have gone out of their way to create an operating system, a desktop environment that would allow a Windows user to almost seamlessly convert to Linux. Now why would a, a Windows user want to convert to begin with? What is there about Zorin or about Linux in general that would entice them to abandon Windows which is safe because they know it and then come over to, to Linux. Well we can explain to them how it is a safer operating system because it's all but immune to viruses and that because the source code is open there's so many eyes on the kernel that it's virtually impossible for anybody to slip a back door in via the kernel. Uh, anything like that and like with the recent uh, media coverage of the NSA leaks, uh, the NSA backdoors in Windows, you know, that, that sort of thing is a lot harder to pull off in Linux just because there are so many eyes on the source code. But the average user really doesn't, doesn't really care about all that. The average user wants an operating system that's going to be intuitive, easy to use, that there's not going to be a learning curve for them. You know, they just want something that works. And I think that Zorin has pulled this off nicely. When we look at the Zorin OS desktop, we see an environment that is going to be friendly to a Windows user. The bar, the menu, the task manager, task bar down here rather, they're all very Windows 7-ish. Down in the lower right hand corner you have a, a session manager that allows you to get help, adjust your system settings, switch user, lock the screen, or end your session. You also have the calendar with the time down here in the bottom as well as a notification area that allows you to control your uh, volume control, monitor your battery, your network settings, all from right here. You have a quick launch area, much similar to Windows, as well as a menu that is very Windows 7-ish. Uh, in my opinion, this menu is actually more user-friendly than Windows 7. It's searchable like Windows, but unlike Windows, your applications are grouped by category they're grouped by their function or categorized by their function rather I guess is what I'm trying to say whereas in Windows if you're wanting to go to office you have to know or you want to launch any program you pretty much have to know who created that application It's grouped by manufacturer so you have to know that Microsoft created office if you want to go to Outlook uh, whereas here if you want your internet or your your web-based traffic your your email you just go to internet and there it is Thunderbird Mail. 
This look is pulled off by heavy use of AWN, which is Avant Window Navigator, and it is customizable. So for an intermediate or advanced user using Zorin, you can go in and configure this any way you want. Let's take a look at some of the applications you get with Zorin. Under Accessories, you have the Archive Manager, Disk Manager, you can get to your File Manager. You do not get Multisystem. I installed this myself. I have another video on Multisystem that explains what it is and how to install it. Very handy. You get a Screenshot Utility, Terminal. I installed VirtualBox. You do not get that. There are several games pre-installed. You get Solitaire, Mahjong, there's a Minesweeper clone, a Tetris clone, and Sudoku. Under Graphics, you get a Document Viewer, the GIMP Image Editor, it's a very powerful image editing suite, Image Magic, Image Viewer, LibreOffice Draw, Shotwell Photo Manager, I enjoy Shotwell very much, and a simple scanner uh, scanning utility. Under Internet, you get desktop sharing, and you get Google Chrome as the default web browser that comes installed. Uh, I was, I'm happy to see this. In my opinion, not enough Linux distributions use Google Chrome. The Pigeon Internet Messenger is also installed, as well as Romania Desktop, uh, Remote Desktop, and Thunderbird is an email client. Now, Zorin. The, the distributors there, the developers at Zorin, have also included a few custom utilities. And the Zorin Web Browser Manager is one of those. When you launch it, it does prompt you for your sudo or password. And here you can manage what web browser your operating system uses. If you don't like Chrome, you can uninstall it from this one interface. You can also install Firefox, Opera, and Midori. So they, they've made handling your web-based applications very easy. Looking back at the menu under Office, you do get the LibreOffice suite, which is a very powerful Microsoft Windows Office compatible Office suite. In fact, you can opt to save uh, your, your documents in the Microsoft Office formats or in the Open Document formats, as well as many others. Under sound and video, Brassero is the disc burner. You get the Cheese webcam booth. I installed Caden Live. You do not. This does not come by default. The OpenShot video editor, Rhythmbox music player. You get a sound recorder and a video player. Under System Tools, this is where you're going to get your administration and preference menus, as well as a disk usage analyzer, a system cleaner, your power statistics, system logs another shortcut to your system settings, as well as the Zorn Look Changer. This is another one of those Zorn developed applications. Now Zorn has gone out of its way to create a desktop environment that is friendly to the new user, that'll be laid out in such a way that a new user won't have that much of a learning curve to have to get through. To that end, this Zorn Look Changer, by default, the desktop, like I said, is Windows 7-ish, but you can also opt to have a menu layout that is similar to Windows XP or use the GNOME 2 desktop layout, which is very similar to Mac OS. Wine comes installed in Zorn OS, which will allow you to, you, you can attempt to get your Windows uh, programs operating in Linux using Wine, as well as the Software Center. Now this is one of the areas in which Ubuntu-based distribution shines. Many of the Linux distros that I've used have not been very user-friendly, have not been intuitive with their Software Center, with their package management, but Ubuntu-based distros, whether you're using Ubuntu proper, Linux Mint, or Zorn OS, they all use a very intuitive user-friendly software center. With other software managers, you pretty much have to know what you're looking for before you install it. 
if I were a new user and I knew that I wanted a video, video editing program, I would have to know what program I was looking for. I wouldn't know to look for Caden Live. But with Ubuntu or Zorin, the programs are categorized. So if you know you're looking for graphics, you can go into a graphics submenu. You can go into photography, publishing, video, 3D. I mean, it's, it's categorized in such a way that it makes it really easy for a user to find what they're looking for. You can uninstall, manager installed software, all from right here. And it also, if you do know what you're looking for, it does support searching. You can get more info, you can rate uh, applications that you have installed, you can read comments that other viewers have made. So all in all, Software Center, in my opinion, is one of the strongest selling points for Ubuntu-based distros like Zorin. From their main menu, you also have quick access to your home folder, the subfolders, recent items, your computer's root system, network drives, and system settings. You also have session buttons down here to log out or shut down your system. The overall feel of Zorn is very well thought out. It flows very well. Everything from the wallpaper to the icon set just looks good. It's cohesive. It, it flows and it is visually appealing, which is important for users that are new. If you have a bare bones, minimalist desktop, that's not going to provide much incentive for a new user to come over. Now, Zorin comes with Compass installed, so you get lots of eye candy. Now, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I'm partial to KWIN, primarily because Compass can be, well, kind of choppy. But Zorin has implemented Compass in such a way, using OpenGL, that it just flows. It is a good implementation, and I'm pleased with it. So let's take a look at some of the eye candy effects that you get uh, available to you in Zorin. Take a look at opening the file manager. You see you do have your wobbly windows. You have windows snapping, all of it available to you. Let's see. You get the shift switcher. You get the, of course, the compass cubes. Compass cube is installed, which Windows would never dream of doing this. <laughs> A little bit more eye candy for you. You can paint the desktop with fire. And there is a pretty cool water effect. Now granted, this is all just eye candy. It's icing on the top and it's not much for production. But you know what? It's pretty cool. And if I was a new user, a casual user just coming over from Windows, that would help sell sell me on Zorin. Uh, it, it's, it's just part of that wow factor that Linux has to offer that Windows can't do. Now, in my opinion, Zorn is, would be appropriate for the new user and advanced user alike. Because it is based on Ubuntu, you can get in there and you can customize and tweak it however you want. It would be suitable for the casual home user that just uses uh, the, the computer to surf the net, check their email. It would be safer for them because it is uh, so impervious, well I don't want to say it's impervious, you're so much less likely to become infected by a vi virus or other malware. But it's all, it would also be appropriate for a office productive environment because you do have utilities that, that are compatible with your Microsoft Office products. So you can get a lot accomplished in, in a work environment. And there's so much more available for it. Yeah, I think that if I had a new user, somebody that was in Windows that came to me and said, hey, tell me about Linux, what does it have to offer, 
I would point them to Zorn first. I think Zorn is a great stepping stone into the Linux environment. Let me know what you think. What would you consider to be the ultimate introductory Linux distribution? Please don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, let me Just let me know what you think. If there's anything you want me to cover, any how-tos, any uh, distros you would like to see uh, reviewed, please leave me a comment. Well, this has been Init Zero for Run Level Zero. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon with another video.